Welcome to the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Go to FBHP.com to learn more about Farm Bureau Health Plans 77 year history in Tennessee and to get a quote today. That's FBHP.com for Farm Bureau Health Plans. Happy New Year, everyone. Glad to have you with us on the OTP and going to share a really special conversation that I had with one of the Titans greats in recent years. That's punter Brett Kern. He was something else during his time with this football team and means a lot to the people in the community. And I got to take him as part of our Follow Me Through Tennessee series to Manchester, Tennessee and Jiffy Burger, where I had the Bonnaroo Burger. That's another story. If you've never been to Jiffy Burger, you must go. And if you like something crazy, the Bonnaroo Burger outstanding, the fries outstanding, everything they do at Jiffy Burger is phenomenal. Tell them we sent you when you go by, and I have a feeling they'll take extra good care of you. But as we rode down in my truck, I got a chance to talk with Brett Kern at length about his career. He told some funny stories, and we wanted to share that entire conversation with you on the OTP. So here's Titans great Brett Kern on the road, following me through Tennessee to Jiffy Burger in Manchester on the OTP. I know you're just starting it, but how's retirement going? <laughs> It's going great. Um, you know, I kind of had in my mind, you know, up in Philly, just experiencing being away from family. And, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a man of uh, <laughs> rhythm and routine. And, uh, you know, you could probably call my wife on a Wednesday at 11 o'clock and say, hey, what's Brett doing right now? And she'd be able to tell you, right? So <laughs> uh, going up to Philly, uh, great spot, great, great organization. Uh, but everything was just, it was different. You had a, a new rhythm, new routine, things that I've been used to for so long for, you know, 13 years in Tennessee, right? It was just totally kind of flipped upside down. And so uh, I knew that if I wanted to keep playing football, um, you know, I, I'd be in a different city. It wasn't going to be at home in Nashville. And, uh, and so that's when, you know, I kind of started thinking about, you know, being done and, you uh, you know, I'm also, I always told myself, and you were to ask other guys, you know, that I play with, that the day that I don't feel like I'm punting at the elite level that I know I can punt, um, you know, it's kind of the day that, that I need to be done. Because I don't want to be out there just punting and kind of surviving. And if people know me for the type of punts that I had and, you know, the consistency, and if, if I'm not there, then, um, you know, it's time, it's time to move on. So, um, I think another big decision for that was, you know, family. Uh, my kids are older, you know, 13, 11, 7, right? So they're the, the sports, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, and I want to be there for all of it. I want to start, you know, coaching and, and helping out. And, um, you know, as you know, football, your weekends are kind of tied up for, oh, yeah. for half the year. So, <laughs> Well, it's funny uh, because people always said to me, they say, do you, do you hunt or fish? And... I tell them no, I, I, I don't do either. And they're, oh, well, you don't like that, or you right. against that? It's like no, no, no. It doesn't have anything to do with that. It's right. I work weekends. Right. I mean, you don't generally go out Tuesday afternoon, you know. Right. Um, and so that's yeah. It, it it is a life change because the commitment to anything related to sports. And I tell college kids this too. If yeah. you want to work in anything in sports, it's going to be nights and weekends. That's right. Yeah. And that's the hardest part of it, really. Right. Yeah. Because it's hard on a family. It is. And so, you know, you get to the point where it's just, uh, I, I, I mean, if you were to ask me in college, hey, you're going to play in the NFL for 15 years, I would have, <laughs> I mean, I would have laughed and I said, I mean, that would be unbelievable if that happens. But, I, you know, I mean, the, the chances, the percentages of that happening is so slim, right? Unbelievable. Um, and so I've been blessed with 15 years, and it's just just felt like it was time to to hang them up and, and just kind of see what the next chapter of life brings, and more importantly, you know, just spending more time with family and uh, you know get the uh, the coaching hat on for for the kids, you know. So your son Bryce is 13. What sports yeah. is he involved with? Uh, he's he's doing flag football. Um, I got him into golf, and so we're. We're trying to play golf a little bit more. 
Um, and honestly, you know, we go we go over to the little course there in Franklin, right, right there by Legends, and uh, I love it because it's not a difficult course. Like it's it always keeps him engaged, right? And it's working on you know parts of of his game that he you know needs to work on, but just to be able to walk and talk, you know, um, from hole to hole uh, is a lot of fun. And it's time that um, I just want to cherish right now, you know, because when you it's got five years left, which seems like a lot, but I mean, you know how fast things go, right? <laughs> um, and I just want to be able to to make the most of those those years that I have left with him uh, before he goes off to, to college. Any interest in punting or kicking? Yeah, we fool around uh, in the front yard. So he's 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 natural. He's got longer legs. So um, I think that'll cater more towards punting. And I think he's just a little bit more interested in punting. Uh, but his thing is, he's growing so fast that his, his foot, his foot size is growing as well. And for the size football that they would kick, it's just kind of, it's it's difficult for him. But, sure. it, but it works out well for punting. So, um, yeah, I mean, I give him I give him pointers here and there, and sometimes they're taken well. <laughs> and other times it's the, ah, oh, Dad, come on. Like, I got it, Dad. I'm like, okay. Um, Welcome to being a dad, right? Yeah, I just hope I don't have to send him to a camp to learn punting when you know I, you know he's got a, a pretty good resource uh in his home so but uh we'll see how that goes so my neighborhood i had my son out one day and we were working on punting and at the time craig hendrick lived in the back of my neighborhood that's a good that's good it was well it was really, <laughs> it was, it was really great so so craig comes by one day mm -hmm. matthew's probably 10 or 11 and uh Craig just pulls over. And he says, show me one. Sure. And, he, and so he he hits one. He's like, okay, try this. And it was something that I had just shown Matthew not five minutes before, which he, of course, had not listened to at all. And Matthew did exactly what Craig told him and then hit a spiral that went, you know, 25 or 30 yards, which was a really good kick. Right. And uh, Craig gets back in the truck and says, oh, okay, see you later, thanks. And so, <laughs> That's so Craig. Yeah, it was so Craig. It was so underwhelming. He's like, hey, try that. I mean, he said like six words. Right. But it was Craig Hentrick. And right. so my son was like, that's Craig Hentrick. Yeah. And uh, that was one of the neat things for my kids growing up around the team is they have all these pictures where Javon Kirst palmed their heads, yeah. you know, with his massive hands. That's right. And yeah. Albert Hainsworth had them in bear hugs and, you know, Kerry Collins was doing stuff with them. And I mean, it's just what a, what a blessed way for them to, to grow up. Yeah. So fun. I, I think they thought everybody was like that, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, you know, when, uh, you know, for Bryce to be able to go on the field oh. after games or in the locker room or, or at the Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, in the Pro Bowl, uh, you know, playing catch with Lamar Jackson, and, uh, That's insane. you know, Mark Ingram's trying to, trying to teach him a dance, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, being, being able to hang out with Mahomes and some of those guys, and just play catch with them, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been, it's been a huge blessing, I mean, you, you got, um, you know, kids that obviously look up to Derrick Henry, and, uh, you know, Kevin Byers, some of the, you know, Jeffrey, the guys on the team that are just phenomenal role, role models, right? And um, I always tell people, you know, don't buy a jersey unless of somebody, unless you know they're yeah. somebody that you want to, That's right. you know, have their last name that you're representing. And, uh, you know, thankfully, the Titans have a lot of those guys, right? But, um, you know, but Bryce and Derek are, you know, buddies, right? <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> uh, and so it's... Um, Sometimes, sometimes you got to pinch yourself, you know, sometimes, even through my whole career, I've just been, you know, to, to go in when I was in Denver and John Lynch was the locker across from mine, right? And uh, I just remember thinking, this is, this is John Lynch, right? And Brian Dawkins was, uh, you know, two lockers down to the left. Crazy. And, um, yeah, it's <laughs> all throughout the years that the guys have been able to play with and you know, to, to, to be in a locker room with Randy Moss and, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's been a huge blessing. Who was the most excited guy? Who was the guy you were most excited to meet? 
excited to meet. Um, or that floored you the most? Well, probably Randy. Yeah. Because um, I had a Randy Moss Vikings jersey growing up. Wow. Right? And so, and I, <laughs> and I remember I was on the verge of my agent and the Titans were talking about an extension. Because uh, I was right on that, yep. that cusp of, hey, we can get him locked up for four years, three, four years, maybe five, whatever it was that, the, that uh, my agent and the Titans were talking to. And, uh, you know, it didn't happen for two, three weeks, and uh, which is not the easiest thing to do during the season. I, I definitely wouldn't recommend that to any youngster out there. Um, but uh, but the, the Titans called my agent and they said, hey, uh, we're, we're going to have to put this, this deal on hold till after the season because we're, we're signing Randy Moss. And uh, my agent calls me and he tells me, and I remember being frustrated for about five seconds. Right. And then I thought, well, wait a second, we're signing Randy Moss. Moss. This is somebody that I've looked up to, you know, since I was in high school when he came to the league and seeing how he played. And now I'm going to be a teammate with Randy Moss. Uh, and so I was okay with that. And um, he ended up being as advertised and um, heck of a teammate. And there's always, always like story time by Randy's locker, you know, before practice, after practice. And you just tell stories. Um, so it's uh, – <laughs> Randy Moss is definitely that's definitely the top one. I got a call during a funeral that we were signing him. I'm sitting in a funeral. Wow. And I don't usually bring my phone into things like that. Right. You, you, you're always afraid your phone Phone's will go off. Will ring. Right. As you know, much as you try you know, to. Have, how many times you check too? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's so I, I don't bring it into church, and I try not to bring it into like weddings or funerals or anything, right. or school performance or anything important. Right. So I had it in my coat, and I didn't realize it, and then it was just like buzzing. And this was 2010. Right. And so the buzz wasn't terribly subtle at that time. It was like, you know, <laughs> and so it wasn't ringing. Right. But it just kept going off, and so I'm sitting there and. And of course, I'm not answering it, but it just keeps going off. And then we're in like the receiving line to right. give condolences and get up to the folks. And it's like, and I'm like, oh gosh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> and so I get outside, and you know, they've, I, you know, I, I, I could have gotten a text message at the time, but everybody at that point still called. It's like nobody calls on the phone anymore now. Was that still... No, that wasn't... When did it switch where your text messaging... Because I remember you had to pay like five, ten cents you per, did. T- per text you message. You did. No, this was 2010. So, but so we're, we're, in yeah. that, we're in that spot the where... The tweener. Te- yeah, we're in the tweener. Yeah. So I walk outside. I tell my wife, I said, i got to go outside and see what this is. And so I listen to the voicemail. We're signing Randy Moss. And we had to do a live hit. I'm standing in the parking lot. Um under an underhang it's pouring rain <laughs> and I'm doing an interview because this is a huge deal it's Randy Moss right and you know at, at that point in the 2010 season we're still in it yeah um, you know because that was the year we started five and two yep and then ended up six and ten and everything kind of went crazy down the stretch but yeah we added him and you're thinking okay this is going to be great and he was so different than when he was being recruited. He's one of the most bizarre recruits I ever covered. And I didn't have the primary role for my for the radio station. Another friend of mine, Brent Hubbs, dealt with him more. But he was bizarre. Just yeah. completely baffling. And I think now maybe he was just messing with people. I, 100%. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. But then he ends up being almost positively delightful when he was here. And then, you know, he's great on TV. He's great on TV, yeah. And we still, I mean, you know, I took Bryce down to the Super Bowl when Ryan Suckup was playing in it. Um, and we drove out, uh, you know, because Matt Hasselbeck was on that, um, the countdown as well. Yeah. And so we... I was texting Matt. He said, "Hey, come out to the to the beach. That's where we're at." And so we drove out there and got to see the set. And uh, you know, anytime I see Randy, he's always been uh, so nice and friendly. And 
smart guy. Smart guy. Yeah. Very smart. And um, yeah, he's <laughs> he was fun to be around. It, I wish it was for longer, but um, yeah, what a what a teammate. You ever counted up how many different teammates you had? You know, my wife thought uh, you know playing with with Fitzy, you know, and what he did. Remember how he listed every teammate that he played with, and um, and I thought about doing that. Uh, I just didn't. I just didn't know where to start. I didn't know where to start. Um, but it's a lot. It's a lot of really good guys that I've been able to play with. Um, a lot of guys I've been able to get close with. Where does Ryan Fitzpatrick rank on your list of characters that you play yeah. with? Um, he's in that uh, Matt Castle, Ryan Fitzpatrick. It's like this this category of guys that are just they're smart uh, and very witty and um, extremely funny and quick. Like Ryan was, his humor is it's quick, uh, and so you felt like if you got into some type of um, I don't want to say argument, but you know the jabs right that happened in the locker room, you weren't gonna win. Because uh, he was so quick and witty with it that it just left you kind of. And I, I, I really don't know how to respond to that. I don't know what to say. I, yeah. I, while you're while you're laughing hysterically as he made fun of you, right? But you ranked Matt Castle in there too. Yeah, Matt's up there. I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. Yep. Well, he's certainly a bright guy who had a really good career too. He played for a really long time too. Um, yeah, I've I've been uh, I've been really fortunate and blessed to that row, you know, that kind of that quarterback yeah. row that I've been a part of, uh, you know, with, with Marcus and, um, you know, Marcus is, you know, one of my favorite teammates I've ever played with. Um, but that, some of those quarterbacks that have come through have been, um, I, shoot, I remember being next to Kerry Collins and yeah. um, how awesome he was to be around. And, um, you know, I had Craig on one side and Kerry on the other side and you know, after I got cut in Denver, um, to be able to come here and to have those two guys, Craig to your left and, and Kerry on your right, was, uh, <laughs> I mean, that alone right there helped me kind of recover and bounce back from, you know, from getting cut. And uh, those two guys, to be around those two guys for as young as I was and to be able to pick their brain and talk. And what you, like what you said earlier, Craig, it was just, he would come out to practice and you know, I'd hit three or four balls in a row that I didn't like, and he would just say, hey, why don't you hey, move your drop inside an inch? You know, he's back there, and I'm thinking, I didn't even know he was really paying attention that much. And, okay, yeah, you got it, Craig, and I do it. Bam. Four in a row, five in a row. And I'd look back, and Craig would be gone. He'd be headed back to the training room. Just, you know, <laughs> he didn't say much, but, you know, his advice was, uh, was just so on point. But he never wanted anything. No, he didn't. He just wanted to give his opinion and what he thought, and, and he was right. And off he went. He didn't, you know, he didn't need the attention. He didn't need the hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Like, I mean, he would he would stop you before you even got started to, to compliment him. How lucky was Rob Baronis that he had Craig Hendrick when he made the Titans when he became an NFL kicker? Yeah, um, I, I, you know, I. I've had a lot of conversations with guys over over the years that I've played and, you know, with kickers and um, just how important holding is uh, and how important, um, you know, your your holder is as a person because uh, the things the things that you say, uh, you're kind of like, you know, suck up and I always used to talk about like, I mean, he, he's the golfer, right? And, right. and the holder is the caddy. Right. Uh, the golfer is the one that's going to get all the attention. Uh, look at that shot, look what you did. Um, but the work kind of leading up to it, you know, the caddy is just as important, right? Sure. So um, That's great in golf now. They are giving us those conversations more on TV. Yeah. It's fascinating. It is fascinating. And just to see really how much detail goes into every shot. More of our conversation with Brett Kern coming up, but we remind you that Titans fans, it's always game on with Duncan. So grab a coffee, kick off the action. Whether that's drinking a cup of coffee on your way to the game or grabbing one to go before watching the game at home, Duncan is always there to help you get your game on. 
Just like the pros, we need to be at our best come game time, which is why Duncan is the most important part of your pregame ritual because it's always the best call for football. America runs on Duncan. Now here's more of my conversation on the way to Manchester and Jiffy Burger with Brett Kern on the OTP. Because um, there's, I mean, there's so much. It's such a finite, uh, you know, a shot here or there. I mean, it's just like a football game, right? To play here, play there can, can cost you a ball game. Right. Well, you know, a shot here, a shot there throughout a tournament. And, you know, you go from winning a tournament to, you know, now you're, now you're not even top 10 and, and all that kind of stuff that goes along with it. But, um, yeah, I mean, for, for Rob to, to have Craig, uh, not only as a person, right, for Rob coming right. to the league, um, anytime you can get just a veteran leader. And I, I know there's a couple times here, you know, in Tennessee where we had some young guys in that would, you know, they're going to battle it out. They were going to let them, you know, battle out to see who can do it, right? And, uh, you know, I just felt like it was part of my responsibility to – to help them out mentally and, and really take a lot of the pressure off of them, um, you know, as far as holding. Like, hey, I'm, I'm going to be as consistent as I can be, and I'm going to help you out as much as I can so that you don't even have to think about all that. Because there are there are times where, you know, the holding's not great. Um, and sometimes you get a veteran kicker that gets a young punter in there, uh, and they don't understand the finite details. Well, then that's something else that the kicker now has to think about. Right. On, on top of everything else that's going on and if you can just go out there and just know just hey all I have to worry about is just kicking it through these yellow things right and getting three points or an extra point uh it makes their job a lot easier so when you were suck ups caddy at Kansas City in 2016 when he hit the kick <laughs> at the end of the ball game so what are you telling him leading up to that um I've always wanted to know that yeah I mean it's the hard part was is that <laughs> in warm-ups, I don't know if Ryan got past 42. He, he did. Right. I, mean, yeah, I, th so, I thought I had him, because I watch to get right. a gauge. Yeah. I thought I had him at like 47, maybe, barely, kind of, yeah. sort of. I mean, he wasn't anywhere near 50. Right, because Dustin and I, I remember Dustin Colquitt and I talking in warm-ups with punting that I, I don't think I got a ball over 45. That's brutal. Right, and he hit one that was 50, but it was, I mean, that thing looked like an Aaron Rodgers Hail Mary. It didn't even, you know, barely got off the ground. And so, uh, so I remember Ryan in the warmups, and he was just, he's like, he's like, Brad, I think an extra point's even going to be, you know, a tall task in this game. And because uh, the ball, I mean, it was so cold, and that ball was so hard that the sweet spot just shrunk, uh, and you had to hit it perfectly on top of your body, just, you know. You can only be by the heater so much. That's right. Because uh, if you're by the heater, then all of a sudden your muscles are staying really, really loose. And then when you go to the cold, it's just, it's not, it's not great. Um, but I just remember us talking and, you know, the thing is, is, you know, when you get that far back, you know, to get a little extra distance, sometimes you can lean the ball forward, mm -hmm. right? But in doing that, it lowers your trajectory. Right. And so there's kind of a finite the detail of what's too much, what's not enough. I mean, do you want to hold it straight up and down? Uh, you know, so we kind of had that conversation and, um, you know, if anything, we just we just kind of kept it a little bit straighter than normal for him, uh, just so he can maybe get a little bit more of a draw to maybe try to get an extra yard or two. Uh, and I just remember jogging out there thinking how, I, did, <laughs> I cannot believe we're attempting this thing, but we have no other option, Nope. right? Um, so he got that first crack at it, and it was short, uh, barely. I don't, I don't, you know, from my view, it looked like he barely missed it. I'm not sure what your view was, but um, I'll tell you this: it was apparent when he hit it, it wasn't going to have enough. Okay. I yeah. mean, you can sometimes you can see from where we are, right? And where our booth was was a great angle. We were closer to that yard line than the other side of the field. Right. And so when it came off his foot and Andy Reid had called the timeout, you're like, well, did he not hit it as hard as he could because of the timeout? Or right. I think he took a full swing, though, didn't he? I think he did, too. But I also know, I know with Ryan that when he really, really goes after it, he, he tends to hook it and he'll okay. miss it left. And okay. so uh, I think there was, in his mind, okay, I know I have to go after this really hard, but if I do, you know, 
what I, I at least want to give it a chance, right? And so, I mean, he, he gave it all he had, and it was straight as an arrow. Um, and then they called the timeout, and I just remember him bending over and, and retying his kicking shoe. And uh, he's like, "Boy, he's like, well, I better give this all I got." I said, "Ryan, you better, <laughs> you better give this all you got, buddy." And, uh, and then the next one, he just he smoked it. And yep. went in, and he went right to the Chiefs bench to celebrate. And I'm not sure if that was kind of a, hey, you know, I played here for a long time. This is, you know, he's had some game winners before in, in Chiefs uniforms, right? But uh, or if it was more or less like, uh, you know, we called him the Chief Killer. He uh, did it because that's what he that's what he does. I remember his first game as a Titan opened up at Arrowhead, and he went like four for four, five for five, right? And uh, you know, we won the game. The rest of that season is something not to talk yeah, about, but you know, we started 1-0. Yeah. 2014. Yeah. Started 1-0. Yeah. Uh, he's chief killer, and he did it in the Super Bowl. He did it in 2016, and uh, it's, uh, that's a, that's something I'll never, never ever forget. One of my favorite guys I ever covered, Brian Succo. Yeah. Quality human being. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Yeah, I mean, but a true professional. Yeah. Talked to you after he hit him, talked to you after he missed him. Yep. Understood everybody had a job to do. Yeah. Um, one of my big thrills was getting to see him when we practiced against Tampa in 2021 down there and to just congratulate him on being a Super Bowl champion. Yeah. You know, those guys who go other places, I mean, we, we certainly want to win one desperately. But, right. Oh, 100%. But you're yeah. happy for those people who do it the right way. Yeah. And that's uh, – I think that's why – you know, Bryce and I drove down there. Is uh, I just didn't want to miss that. You know, he's. We were brought together through football, but obviously we're brothers. You know, for life outside of that, and that's something that you want to be there for. Um, so I was, I was excited for him to win a Super Bowl, and I remember the conversation that we had. Uh, it was training camp, and he was like, he was down in Tampa. He's like, man, I got this workout down here. I, I just don't know. I just don't know if I should do it. I don't know if I should sign here and. Like, dude, you're with Tom Brady. Like, you got a chance. I mean, what do you what do you have to lose, right? Absolutely. And um, so that's worked out worked out well for him. Yeah, he did okay. Yeah, he did good. Heck, heck of a career. He's one of the most um, accurate guys that I've seen. He he'd be one of those guys where if you tell him from 40 yards, you know, I want you to aim and hit this crossbar or this field goal post every time. He's gonna, he's gonna hit it. So um, sometimes it, it almost became boring. It was just so straight and just down the middle. And he's like, "Why, why are we even, Ryan? Like, you're gonna put it right down the middle every yeah. time. Can we just, can we just move on and do something else?" But were you surprised he came to your retirement announcement? Um. Yeah, I mean, we're. I, I was just thankful that he was able to come. I knew he was. I knew if he could come that he was going to be there, um, you know, for Bo to fly in, uh, obviously Morgan to come, um, you know, that meant a lot because those, those three guys right there are, you know, my my favorite teammates really of all time. Sure. And guys that I've gotten, they're, they're guys that are, they're just more than teammates, um, you know, hang out as families and um, we're just, we're just close. And so for the three of them to be there, um, you know, it meant a lot. What, uh, you probably, by the way, that day couldn't have gone any better. Yeah, you, uh, I see you're not the, the sling anymore either, which is I'm great. Healthy. You're healthy. I'm healthy. Um, train staff. That's got it. You, got you got good, me going. Got you yeah. through a good rehab. rehab got to be ready for, hey, rehab. availability. Availability. Right? That's what they say. That's, that's what the, you know, you walk into the training room and that's the best the best availability is hey, we we live by that whatever, too. Yeah, I mean, when you get the opportunity to work for an NFL team, you know there aren't a lot of people that are lucky enough to get to do that. So yeah, you don't miss stuff. Availability is the best ability. I think that's what it says. That's right. That's a verbalism, yeah. right? Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of saints up in the building. I have it written down in a notebook. Do you really? I do. Because you never you never know or you never knew when Vrabel was gonna either show a teammate on the board and ask, hey, who's who's this teammate, right? 
and of course it was great because it was like a high school throwback or a college throwback and it was <laughs> it was pretty that's they, awesome yeah you know stretch would find these pictures that were just gold right um but you never knew when he was going to ask a question of what does it say in the training room or what does it say outside the locker room line four right and there might be five lines and you have what's, what's line four I don't know well I think I have one two and three memorized but four and five are a little sketchy yes so I just remember um, when he came when he came in 2018 he started doing that and I just thought to myself I better go around the building and write this stuff down <laughs> I don't know if he'll ever call on me right uh, I, I, yeah I went through wrote it all down and I think I still have the notebook in my office at, at the house that's so great you got, ner- you got nervous during team meetings. Yeah, like I started I, special teams meetings, totally fine. I was obviously I knew all the calls, I knew all the returns, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, but you know, team meetings is when you started. You know, hands got a little cold, started to sweat a little bit because I mean, you just did not know what he was going to ask. So, I mean, you played for. All of the Titans head coaches. Fisher. I did. To Munchak. Yeah. To Wisenhunt. To yeah. Malarkey and now to Vrabel. Yeah. Uh, I did. And it was, each one was, um, you know, I kind of learned from from each one, kind of, you know, the how, they're, how they taught, how they, their expectations, um, you know, kind of for each coach you played for, you knew like when the next one came up, kind of what to expect and different situations, um, styles that they liked. Uh, and it was hard. I mean, every time you got a new coach, um, you know, you, you feel you have to you have to prove yourself to somebody that you don't know, right? Munchak was was a little bit easier because he was under Coach Fish's staff, right? And so he'd seen you. You know, he, he'd seen a lot of the guys that were there. He saw me punt before, all that. But you still have to still have to prove yourself, right? You have to prove yourself every year regardless if you make a Pro Bowl or, you know, obviously you maybe, maybe don't have a great year. And so, because um, I remember 2016 year was I, – I mean, I didn't have a great year. It wasn't, wasn't hit the ball great. It wasn't as consistent as, consistent as I wanted to. And I knew 2017 had to be a really, really good year. And uh, – Thankfully, it was you know the first Pro Bowl I went yeah. to, but uh, worked out. <laughs> it's good. It was a good bounce back year, right? Absolutely. Um, but yeah, every time you get a new coach, new GM, um, there's just that extra pressure to perform uh, for somebody that I mean, you know. I, I don't. I don't know who Ken Wisdom was. I knew that he coached, but you know, he doesn't know me. I don't know him. He, he, you have to go out there and improve yourself, and um, that can take that can take a lot out of you mentally and physically and uh you know i remember us chatting on the on the podcast um you know kind of about the biggest accomplishment and i think to be able to play for all the gms all the coaches that the titans have had um you know that's probably been my biggest yeah that's probably the thing i'm probably most proud of I get that. what do you remember about when they let wizard hunt go and malarkey became the head coach what do you remember about that week um, I'm trying to remember what game he got. Was it after the Texans? Was. Yeah, because I'll I, I I give you a setup on that. So Jimmy Stanton is our director of media relations, or is over all of our communications at the time. Right. And we had wondered if if we lose this game, do they make a change? Because it was in Houston. It's, it's, there's something about well, going, something about going to Houston though. Like I remember Coach Fisher and Coach Munch really preaching about, uh, hey, we're, we're going to Houston. Do you, know, owner, do you know what this means? Yeah, our, I, I don't know. Every player needs to understand that to our ownership, the Houston game is significant. Very significant. We played particularly poorly in that game. Yeah. Marcus took a beating. Yep. Um, so Jimmy gets on the plane and sits. His seat is next to mine. And I said, "So what do you think?" He goes, "He goes. I don't think any decisions been made." So normally, if you're going to fire a coach in season, you fire the coach on Monday, right? And they 
you know, we get to Monday and I walk by Jimmy's office Monday morning. He goes, I'm not hearing anything. And the reason we're talking about it is we have TV shows to do. Right. And you got so, the radio show. Well, yeah. Yeah, you got a but, lot. But the, the, the Monday night radio show is one thing. But we have to put out TV shows for later in the week, and we have to shoot them early in the week because if if we're in a situation where somebody's going to get fired, you don't want to send out a show with somebody in the show who's not there by the time the show airs. That's right. <laughs> so I, I, we're going to, to film Titans All Access Monday afternoon, and I looked at Jimmy again. He goes, I, he said, I he said, I think there's some talk, but he goes, I don't I don't know. And so we go, we film the show. Well, Rustin Webster yep. is our general manager. And we do this late Monday afternoon, five o'clock. And we film his segment. And he says, walk outside with me here for a second. I'm like, okay. The segment was great. I was hoping I didn't ask a question that he didn't like. Right. He said, uh, I just got the call before I walked in here. We're making a change first thing in the morning. And ownership, Amy Adams Strong, wanted to take the day to not be emotional because of the Houston game and Which to is make. Important. Yeah. It, but it says a lot about who she is, you know, because she yeah. knew she. She knew she wasn't making the decision for the New Orleans game that Sunday. She was making a, a decision for the whole franchise. Right. And he said, we are we're making a change first thing in the morning. He said, I just wanted you to know that. So I have to walk back in and film the rest of this show Knowing. that I know is not going to air, that we're going to have to go back and reshoot. And I can't tell anybody. Because you know that's <laughs> that's one of the areas. Right. I, I very rarely know things because honestly, Brett, I don't ask. It's easier not to know because right. then when somebody asks you, you can say truthfully, right. "I don't know," because I'm not interested in lying to anybody. Right. And so Tuesday morning comes down, and they call Wiz and Hunt in at eight o'clock, and. He's fired then, and we think it's going to be Malarkey as the interim coach, but quite frankly, we don't know if he's going to take it. Yeah, I remember that. So then you pick yep. up the story from there from the player's perspective. Yeah, I just, um, you know, I, like I said earlier about the Houston, like you know, obviously you know you have to perform every Sunday. That That's just part of your job, but there's something extra when you go down to Houston. It's... And I, I really didn't understand it the first year or two. And then I, it finally, you know, it's like, yeah, this is this is a very, very important game. It's a thing. Uh, regardless of what your record is, like, this is important. And so, and I, I, I we, we lost bad, really bad. Um, and so guys were kind of talking like, do we, is there going to be a change? Do we need to make a change? Oh, you even thought that was possible at that point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because... I, I mean, I remember Coach Fisher and Coach Bunchak. They would always talk about, "Hey, if we don't, if we don't perform down here in Houston, there, there's going to be a change made in some way, shape, or form." Right. Right. So you didn't know. Probably not coaching, maybe, but whoever maybe didn't play well, right. whoever didn't perform, like you're probably going to get cut, right? Um, and so the guys that have been there, that have been through the transition, they understood that, and so. Guys thought, well, could be some players. We, you know, I, things with with Coach Wiz aren't really going how we thought they would, or how how they probably should. Um, but that's pretty crazy to make a change right now. I, there's just all kinds of thoughts, and then nothing happened Monday, and then we, we just okay, well let's let's just keep plugging along because you you're in the building Monday, you're working out, you're doing all kinds of things for post game recovery and sure. all that, and you don't really hear anything, and so. Uh, for it to go down Tuesday, it was, it was like, wow, okay, so who on the staff can take over? And I remember texting some guys, and they were like, man, I hope it's Coach Malarkey. I hope it's Coach Malarkey. I think he would – he's got experience. You know, I like uh, – kind of like the way he conducts things and, you know, talk to the tight ends, and they were all like, yeah, I really, I really hope it's him, right? Yeah. So uh, found out it was him, and um, – 
you know, to come back the following week, uh, you know, and win how we did in overtime in New Orleans, right? Uh, was it Fasano? Was it Anthony Fasano? Anthony Fasano. Yeah. That was, and I remember celebrating, and uh, I remember going down in the end zone celebrating, and it got a little too crowded for me because I remember thinking if someone steps on my foot, be bad. I'm in trouble. Yes. So I did a couple helmet taps, and I remember just getting out of there quickly. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's not an easy thing to go through, um, coaching changes like that. So uh, it just puts, there's already enough pressure to perform and, and to do your job. Uh, you know, every Sunday when you throw on a coaching change and you know that there's a little instabil- instability kind of going on. And, and if you're willing to make a change with a head coach, right, you know, what does that tell you for the players? And so, um, yeah, that was, uh, that, that was a tough year. That was, that was a tough, tough season. Thanks so much to Brett Kern for taking time with me to go to Jiffy Burger in Manchester and to share some good stories in the truck as he followed me through Tennessee. Remind you that SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any other live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans, so Titans fans can fan. Again, thanking Brett Kern and our entire staff and thanking you, the OT people, while wishing you Happy New Year I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the OTP. Titan